fear is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. <laughs> I got you! <laughs> I got you! From the footsteps heard in the dark, the Batman has finally come into the light. Hello everyone, my name is Paige and welcome to The Grub Report for March 9th, 2022. In this episode, I'll be covering the 112 Collective, The Batman. So, a little bit of a gamble, but Mezco did decide to bet on the glittery vampire boy. Hey, Spiegels. Turn ninth generation live action vigilante. The Hogwarts champion, Cedric Diggory. Yeah. No. Robert Pattinson, a.k.a. Arbats, a.k.a. Pattinson, a.k.a. Oh, God, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid avoiding nicknames. <laughs> My humblest apologies, sir. The Batman it is. So this was officially teased day one at Toys Fair of 2022 to coincide with the theatrical release of the film, which is currently raked in $301 at the box office, which spawned a spinoff HBO Max series that's going to be called The Penguin, in which Colin Farrell is reprising his role as Oz, in the origin story that explores not only his rise to power, but also his Dame Dash multitasking ability to run only the hottest nightclub in Gotham City. Get back on track, Paige. You right. So this offering went up for pre-order after being revealed pretty quickly, and as I said before, to piggyback off the movie's release. Now, speaking of releases, this was a regular release, and as of March 11th, 2022, 10 a.m., that's my sound effect for checking my computer. But I'm doing it on my phone. And verified, it is still available for pre-order on mescotoys.com. You can also grab this from any of the other major online toy stores, as well as your uh, favorite wholesaler in the group. Support small business. So all I'm really doing is just highlighting some of the standout bullets taken straight from the product description. Now it looks like we are gonna get 30 points of articulation, which is a very good sign. Usually the licensed characters have about 28, and that usually means that they're using the Netflix Punisher slash Gotham by Gaslight Body. Uh, that's not a bad thing, but two extra articulation points is always a bonus, and that usually translates into the elbow area. Now, of course, this is all speculation, but if you look at two of the promotional images, they do show the elbows close to the body, which is a pretty good indicator but this might be just like a digital render or a well-placed angle i always wait until the product comes out but speculation is always fun right the figure is about 17 centimeters tall which comes out to about 6.69 inches uh which is actually five inches taller than robert pattinson who's actually six foot one nerd knowledge uh but that's pretty much the height of most mezco batmans anyway the batman huh happy sir <laughs> Is going to have four painted head sculpts. Uh, one is going to be just a cow, which is really cool because you can probably have that set up to where the suit is in the display. It just makes for some different photo opportunities. Uh, there's also going to be unmasked head, which I was actually kind of surprised because usually when they start getting into likeness rights or licenses, that puts possible delays on a project. So I think this is a pretty big swing for them. There's also two heads that show gritting teeth. Now, in the past, we've gotten characters that seem to have overbites with these kinds of sculpt work, like uh, Batman or John Wick, or even as far back as Wolverine. This has been an area of improvement for Mezco, uh, but it seems like they're trying to do better with previous licensed smiling sculpts, such as Conan, Gotham by Gas, like Joker, Thanos, and Superman 78. And come on, you can admit it. Christopher Reed had a little bit of a goofy smile, and they nailed it. The suit looks pretty screen accurate. Of course, as I stated before, this is a promotional image and we'll have to wait until we get the final version in our hands before we can judge that for ourselves. Personally, I've never been as detail oriented as some of the other collectors are about this. Like, let's say that there was a bootstrap that's supposed to go right to left and it goes left to right. That stuff doesn't really bother me. Sometimes these things get nitpicked excessively. And that's one of the reasons why I pointed out. It's probably the reason why most toy companies are working off of storyboards or concept designs that some of these things get changed uh, but it does have an impact on the final product it looks like this version is going to come pretty well armored up he's also going to have pouches a utility belt a cape with an integrated posing wire so thankful for these i remember when uh <laughs> if you wanted to show any kind of dynamic cape movement you had to use these wired clips that are used to attach to the stand so this is something that they've been offering for quite a while and for collectors like me it's greatly appreciated 
You also get a bunch of hands, 13 in total, and it's to cover all the gadgets and weapons that he's going to be coming with, such as the grapple hooks, the launchers, sticky bombs, sticky bomb launchers, handcuffs, and a UV light so you can see riddles. Bro. Ugh. Not that kind of riddle. If you are just as that kind of riddle. As well as some batarangs. Now, I don't remember him using these in the movie, but I think it's more part of the suit's design. It's noticeably the symbol on the chest of the Batman. Mezco's not the only toy company that's offered this accessory. Hot Toys and McFarlane have also included batarangs in their products as well. I think this is in part to a leaked promotional image that was back in 2021, which I think is cool because it shows you how far back that this figure has gone into development. The last accessory is the one that I thought was the most interesting, and that is the removable wingsuit. This really isn't a spoiler. It was shown in the trailer, but there is a scene where Batman jumps off a building and then he deploys the wingsuit and it allows him to fly down safely. I'm looking forward to see how this actually works and to see if other characters might be able to use this uh, accessory as well. It'd be really cool to possibly use this with maybe the Black Skull Death Brigade, the Death Brokers, or even Hazard Squad Commander Gomez or any Gomez for that matter. Uh, use this as part of their like espionage repertoire. The Batman <laughs> has an estimated release date of February, April 2023. So I've been mentioning this a few times in the last few months and as recently as the Snake Eyes offering. But these release dates uh, due to post pandemic events, license or approval, materials, shipping costs increase, blah, 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 blah. I know I get it. It's been covered numerous times. So in an attempt not to beat a dead horse, let's try a different approach. So collectors have gotten frustrated with the shifting release dates, and rightfully so. Mezco has modified those release dates to a full year out, and it seems it's in response to the customer feedback that they've been getting about the ERDs, especially with licensed products. So now the initial feedback in the community seems to be that a year out is too far. Give it to me. When the average time for a licensed product has typically been between 12 and 16 months. Now, that's the average time for a licensed figure. There have been way more licensed figure releases than there have been the ones that are either pending or the John Wick Conan Wild Draw 4 card someone's probably going to throw down as a rebuttal. So when it kind of puts them in this damned if they do, damned if they don't scenario, if they stick to the same blueprint projecting licensed products six to ten months out, and then you push it back X amount of times, it just gives collector more talking point fuel for the fire. Even embracing the inevitable and if a project is overshot on the timeline to where it will possibly hit the mark or maybe only have one or two delays, collectors will still seem to complain about that as well. I'm going to scream. And that is where the damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario comes into play because I think if, if Mezco waited for the offering to be on the water and it was heading to the States, which really wouldn't work anyway because it would be a dice roll of guesstimating the production number runs, trying to predict how long the shipment would take to get through customs, let alone be processed off the shipping dock. The problem collectors would run into is that there would be an influx of product that would just randomly drop, pretty much putting the company and the collector at the mercy of the unknown. I know. It's a slow burn with this line, and I guess that's the reason why it doesn't bother me as much, because I utilize that time to kind of save money for the offering when it does become available. Now, I'm speaking from a one to two purchase perspective. Wholesalers taking pre-orders, trying to grind, uh, trying to keep those pre-purchase commitments. I get that totally. It's a completely different arena. But for the average collector, for as much as people think it's intentionally done to frustrate them or turn away customers, I think it's actually a feasible way to really collect this line. So I'm going to have to apologize really quick for the audio from this point on. I actually had some uh, work done on my mouth, and so it hurts really bad. But I'm going to try to press through this, do my best impersonation of Kanye West you know, through the wire. So the price point for this item is going to be $125. Yesterday's price is not today's price. 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 Now, this was another area of concern on the group. Now, I know it's easily said that this is a licensed character. It's a high property, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I've been pointing this out for a few months, and I know people don't really want to hear it. But the price point for these figures is most likely going to go up. The cost of material, shipping, transportation has all been going up on daily necessities. So it's already been a foregone conclusion that the prices of non-essential items were bound to go up as well. 
not only just for Mezco collectors, Marvel Legends, Bandai, Mafex, Mafex, however you want to pronounce it, Rebel Tech, McFarlane. I'm going to take that back. McFarlane collectors are safe. No shots to fire, Mr. McFarlane. But the price points with these figures are going to increase. And some collectors are probably going to have to be a little bit more selective in the figures that they buy, or at least the lines that they collect. But enough future forecasting, right? I'm looking forward to seeing the offering in hand. I, I'm still hoping that the release is before the latter part of the estimated release date. But I do think that this is something that's needed to be done to address some of the areas concerned for customers uh, that they're probably receiving like every single time there's a release date change. I'm also hoping this has a strong pre-sale because there's some other figures in the movie I wouldn't mind seeing. Uh, I know that they've been working on a new female body, so having another version of Catwoman on an updated body would be a great addition. A Jeffrey Wright Commissioner Gordon or a Paul Dano Riddler would also work well, but with the standout performance Colin Farrell gave in the new HBO series in the works, I think that the Penguin would, would probably make the best choice. And I think the character would uh, be able to play into what Mezco's strengths are with soft goods and sculpt department. But you never know, there's sequels coming and maybe they have plans for some of the characters that are going to be introduced into the franchise later. Well, that's all I really have for this edition of the Grub Report. I do have one quick thing for you. Um, while I was doing the video, shipping notifications started going out for the Double Trouble Weapons Extension Pack. It's going to be shipping out of New York. And so Mexico seems like they're going to be showing the East Coast a little bit of love with this release. Sorry, West Coast guys, you're going to have to wait. And with that, that is all I really have for you guys today. I want to thank you very much for sticking with me through the latter part of it. I wanted to press through the video, so appreciate you guys being understanding. I've rambled long enough. My mouth hurts. So my name is Paige, and this has been your Grub Report for March 10th, 2022.